In this section, we want to take a look at an integration technique called partial fractions. There's actually no new calculus in this. Um, it's just an algebraic technique that allows us to deal with functions that look that are called rational functions. So we're going to be looking at uh, polynomials divided by polynomials. Rational functions are polynomial divided by polynomial. Okay. Now. The technique is essentially equivalent to taking fractions apart. So let me start by looking at how we add fractions. So if I had something like, oh, let's say 3 fifths plus 2 sevenths, right, that what I do is I get common denominators, right? So I've got to multiply this first one top and bottom by 7. So this would be 21 divided by. 35, and then I have to multiply this one top and bottom by 5. So that would be 10 divided by 35. So now that I have common denominators, I can um, I can just add. Essentially, there's a distributive property where you factor out the 1 over 35. Right? So I've got 31 over 35 to add those up. Now the process that we're going to be doing is essentially this backwards. We're going to start with this and see if we can work our way back to that. So suppose I didn't just do this problem. Let me let me see what it might look like. Um, so suppose I started with the 31 over 35 and said, hey, if I added two things together, uh, the denominator, you know, this 35 came from multiplying two things together. So it's like, well, it must have come from two numbers that multiply to 35. So let's say 5 and 7. That's pretty much, pretty much all we got. Um, so what I need to find out is what is the thing that goes over the 5? Let's just call that A. And what's the number that goes over the 7? Let's call that B. Okay. So I have this equation that I'm trying to solve for A and B. Um, I generally, let's see, what would I try to do? Uh, maybe multiply both sides by 35. So I'm going to multiply this side by 35. I'm going to multiply all that times 35. So over here is just a 31. And here there's a distributive property that gets it into both of those. So, um, so what happens is the 35 times this, the 5 is going to cancel out to leave just 7 times a. And likewise, the 35 times the second fraction, the 7s will cancel out, leaving just 5b. So anyway, um, wow, what I have here is an equation now, a single linear equation with two variables, a and b, that has infinitely many solutions. Now yes, 3 and 2 satisfy that. So if a is 3, this would be 21, b is 2 is 10, 21 plus 10 is 30, uh, 21 plus 10 is 31, right? So 31, that would work. But there are, in fact, other solutions as well. Um, and there isn't just one. Uh, there's infinitely many solutions. Um, so it may seem like we're going to be barking up the wrong tree, but, but let's do it anyway here. So he, here's an example of what I want to do. So suppose I wanted to integrate the function 3x minus 1 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 dx, right? This is what we call a rational function. It's a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Um, on something like this, when I see a linear numerator and a quadratic denominator, the first thing I think is, um, boy, wouldn't it be nice if the derivative of the bottom was the top, right? Because if it was, then I'd do a u substitution with u equal to bottom, and I'd end up with a essentially a 1 over u du, and I'd end up with a log of the bottom. Um, but the derivative of the bottom is 2x minus 2, and I got a 3x minus 1, yeah, that, that, that just doesn't work so well. So I'm going to try this instead. I'm going to try this notion of partial fractions. So the first thing I got to do is I got to factor that denominator. So I'm just going to look at this 3x minus 1 over. Now I think I can factor that. I hope I can factor that. Um, there's an x and an x and a 3 and a 1. Uh, let's make the 3 negative and the 1 positive so that the insides and the outsides, yeah, they add up to negative 2x. Okay, so I can see what the factors of the denominator are. So that tells me what I want for, um, for my denominators 
um, of this sum. Right? And then I'm going to just put an A and a B over the top. Now I'm going to look at the general um, method of how we do this, what do we put on the tops and what goes on the bottom um, in another video. But this is just an introduction to show you uh, the, the, the basics of the system and how it works. Okay. So I think I can split this up this way. Okay. And i got to figure out what A and B are. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator, right? this thing here. If I multiply this left-hand side by this denominator, I'm just left with the numerator. 3x minus 3. Sorry, 3x minus 1. Sorry. Uh, and then on the right, I'm going to have this denominator times this first fraction. And the x minus 3's will cancel out, leaving me a times x plus 1. This is very similar to way to the way when I multiplied by this 35, the 5 canceled out to begin with, right, leaving me um, 7 times a. Um, and likewise, when you multiply by the second one, the other thing canceled out. That is, when I multiply this denominator here by this fraction, um, the x plus 1's will cancel out, leaving me just b times x minus 3. Okay. So where the calculation up above here left me with a single equation in two variables, what I have now is a single equation in three variables. And I'm thinking, is this any better? Well, actually it is, because this is now not just a statement about numbers, where this was just about numbers. This down here is a statement about functions, that this function of x on the left has to be the same as this function of x on the right. So that means for every single value of x, for x equals 7, for x equals 9, for x equals negative 42, um, anything that you plug in for x has to make this true, which means I actually have infinitely many equations here. I really only need two to find out what a and b are. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. I'm going to show you both ways eventually, but, but right now I'm going to say, hey, if this is true, this must be true for every x, then I'm just going to pick a couple of x's and plug them in. Right? If this function on the left is equal to this sum of these two functions on the right, then I need this function to equal to the sum of those two functions. So for every value of x, this has to be true. Let's try um, let x equal... Now, you could be anything you want, but sometimes there's really nice ones to plug in. For instance, I'm going to let x equal 3. If I let x equals 3, plug it into the left-hand side, I've got 3 times 3 minus 1 equals a, now I'm plugging in over here, a times 3 plus 1 plus b times 3 minus 3. And I'm plugging in a 3 everywhere I see an x. Notice that it was a good choice because this one just goes away. Uh, this looks like a 4a right here. And this is 9 minus 1, which is 8. Come on now. 8, and divide both sides by 4, I've got that a equals 2. Okay. Maybe you can see what another nice value for x might be. Let x equal negative 1, and that's going to make this one be 0. So plug in a negative 1 here, I've got, sorry, it's not equal, I'm plugging in. So 3 times negative 1 minus 1 equals a times negative 1 plus 1, plus b times negative 1 minus 3. And every place I see an x there, I'm plugging in a negative 1 to get this equation. Now, what's that? Minus 3 minus 1, that's a minus 4 over here. This is um, minus, no, that's a 0 right there. And this is a minus 4b. So minus 4 equals minus 4b. Well, that tells me that b better be equal to 1. Remember now, a was chosen to be the numerator for that's going to be over the x minus 3, and the b is chosen uh, to be the numerator over the x plus 1. So my original integral, my original integral of 3x minus 1 over that x squared, I've already forgotten what it is, x squared minus 2x minus 3, there we go, x squared minus 2x minus 3 dx is equal to the integral of a, which is 2, over x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 1. 
and those, e those integrals are equal to each other because this function over here is equal to the function over there. Now, you may wonder, did it matter what two x values I chose? I mean, you might have picked a couple different x values and gotten two different equations. The answer is, if you have it set up right, no, it doesn't matter what x values you choose, that, that they will be equal to each other. Though, make sure you get it set up right is part of um, another video. But for the moment, on these fairly simple ones where you just got like a linear over a quadratic, just factor that denominator and it's going to turn into a constant over one factor plus a constant over the other factor of the denominator. Okay. I mean, you can double check and put these back together again. Right? If I got a common denominator, I just multiply those two together. So the 2 would get multiplied by the x plus 1. So I'd have a 2x plus 2. This little, this little calculating over here. I'd have a 2x plus 2. And then this one would be multiplied top and bottom by the x minus 3. So that would give me another x minus 3. And if I add those up, I got a 3x minus 1, which is what that numerator is. So indeed, if you combine those two fractions together, you're going to get this one. This now, though, is nice to integrate because it's a sum of two things. I can write it as the integral of the first part plus the integral of the second part. Well, actually, let me do that. Integral of 2 over x minus 3 dx and plus the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx. And each one of these things, it turns out, is fairly easy to integrate because if I just let u equal the denominator, then du is just dx, and I'm looking at an integral of 2 over u du. Likewise here, I'm going to let u equal x plus 1, du is dx, and I'm looking at 1 over u du. I'm adding these results. So for this one, I got the natural log, no, I have two times the natural log of the absolute value of u, but u is x minus 3. And this one I have just the natural, natural log of the absolute value of u, but u in that case was x plus 1. Plus c. So by breaking this function up into a sum of two functions, each of those with a smaller denominator than what you started with, it turns out those are easier to integrate, and we get uh, we get a solution down here. Now, there are several ways that this can be done, and there are a lot of different settings, a lot of different situations as to how do you factor and what do you do with the factor. So in the next group of videos, next bunch of videos here, we're going to look at all the different possibilities of things you might run into in trying to do this partial fractions thing.